All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. This is Rosh, and you are watching FM9 Basics, a tutorial series that I'm putting together on how to program the Fractal Audio Systems FM9. So a little about myself. Um, my name is Rosh, and I'm a guitar player in guitar tech in the Los Angeles area. Um, I program and build a lot of guitar rigs for a lot of different clients. Some of my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, Perfect Circle, um, Bush, and more. So um, this video series uh, can be used in conjunction with uh, previous video series, serieses, whatever that is, uh, that I have, um, like FM3 Basics. You can check that out at fm3basics.com or axfxbasics at axfxbasics.com or on this YouTube channel. All the strategies and uh, approaches all work, so there's definitely going to be a lot of uh, you know crossover, but um, this video series can also be self-contained just for the FM9. So if you watch the previous videos in this series, we've been talking mainly about layouts first because this is what's going to, uh, what the factory defaults are when you pull your FM9 unit right out of the box. So now if you take a look um, at those previous things, uh, previous videos, we covered presets, we covered scenes, as well as covering um, the effects, more effects, and the master layout menu. So if this is the first video you're watching, I would definitely recommend watching those first because I may cover some topics here that um, you might get a little confused about if you're not familiar with the concepts in the previous videos. So, okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do in this video is this video is gonna be dedicated to actually building our first custom layout. So, like most guitar players, what we would want on a pedal board is, let's say, a way to switch, you know, maybe different amp sounds or different channels on a channel switching amp. As you can see, all the amp blocks in the FM9 have four channels. So theoretically, you could put a clean, a crunch, you know, a rhythm and a lead sound on different channels. And then you can do that with all the different effects as well. So um, we'll definitely cover that in a future video, but in this case, what we're gonna do is access different scenes and then also be able to you know, turn on and off different effects on the fly. So um, that's a very common situation. So even if you look at some of my custom pre uh, presets that I built for myself, it's basically something similar to like having a clean crunch rhythm lead sound and then um, maybe a different type of lead sound, and then the rest of the buttons on the actual unit itself um, are for turning on and off different effects on the fly. So um, the default layouts in um, the FM9 are already taken for the f one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in the master layout. So by default, you do get this empty one here. Now, you can, of course, always clear a layout, or you can even import or um, custom layouts from other users, or if you want to save it, you can export layouts, etc. In this case, let's leave these alone for now, but what we can do is we can go to layout number eight. So if I select this, you'll notice that the unit is blank. That means all these switches right here can be assigned to be anything. Um, now, if you want to get to a custom layout on the unit itself, you can also go to the master layout menu by pressing the far right two buttons. And then you can select this empty one right up here. And it's gonna select that. So now we got this blank slate that we can assign all types of different parameters to any of these switches. So I'm gonna just rename this. Let's just call this Rosh Custom Layout. And now you have basically um, nine switches to work with. You can kind of assign these to be anything. So. Um, you know, the sky's the limit of what you could do, but let's just say hypothetically we want to access, you know, maybe the first four scenes of this preset. So what we would do is let's say switch number one, two, three, and four are going to be our scenes. And then maybe these buttons right here can be different effects within this preset that we want to turn on or off. So for example, I'll do that now. So we'll take this button. And then down here below, this is where you assign the function to this switch. It gives you a lot of different options. So we're gonna take scene, and then we're gonna go, and then the next step is it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna do with this scene? Do you wanna do any of these features? In our case, we're just gonna select it. So it's gonna be selecting scene one. 
So as you can see, scene one corresponds to scene one in this preset. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the next three switches. So, and then uh, you can also assign the color. There will be default colors, of course, but let's just give these red. And we're gonna assign this to scene. Now, it's gonna go to scene one again. You wanna select scene two this time. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. Let's give it a red color. And then let's go to scene three. So we're gonna select it, scene three. And then let's do this last one. So scene, and then give it a red color, and then scene four. Now, as you can see, the names get populated by default because we're using this display label name. We'll cover this in the future, but for now we can just keep it name. So as you look on the unit, you already see that you have access to four different scenes. So if I um, go through each of the scenes manually on the FM9 edit, you'll see that the scenes follow the editor. Okay, and each scene has different effects turning on and off. And of course, you can actually press that on the actual unit itself. So I'm just gonna lean over and press those. So here's scene one. Here's scene two. Here's scene three. And then as you can see, this drive block turns on right there. And then scene four. Oops, there we go. And then this delay block turns on and this drive block also has been on. So hypothetically in this preset, you have those four scenes, maybe, you know, the verse of a song can be scene one. And then maybe you go to the, you know, the pre-chorus of a song and then that'll be scene two. Maybe the chorus of the song is scene three. And then maybe, you know, there's a guitar solo section. All right, so let's go back to FC Edit. And then now we have these five switches here that we can assign to be anything that we want. So for example, let's say we want access to maybe five different effects that are in this preset. So let's say we want to turn the phaser we want to have access to the phaser to turn it on and off, maybe the drive, the chorus, and then maybe this tremolo. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, and then this delay right here, that's five. Okay, so this is what we would do. So let's take this switch and then let's assign an effect to it. So instead of selecting scene, we can assign an effect. Now, by default, it's going to assign amp one. What you're gonna to wanna to do is, of course, reference your preset and figure out which effect you wanna turn on and off. Now, keep in mind, it doesn't matter what order these are. That's the brilliance of uh, um, any of the Fractal products. This, you can put your most used effects exactly where it's most comfortable to press. Um, so maybe, you know, this top row right here, you know, are effects that maybe you don't use as often as maybe this bottom row. So. Uh, or whatever, you know, y your your preference is. So instead of assigning amp one, let's maybe put the delay there. So I'm going to select delay, okay? And then now you'll see that that delay effect is assigned to the top unit. Now, if you go to a scene that has the delay on, that delay is gonna light up automatically. So you can see that there. And of course you have access in any one of your scenes to turn that delay on or off. So here we're in scene one. And then we can turn on that delay just by pressing the switch. Or we can go to, let's say scene number two. And then you can turn on that delay on or off. And then of course, if we go to scene four, that delay is already on by default. But, you know, we can turn that off on the fly if we want. So, as you can see, it offers a lot of flexibility, especially when you build, you know, a custom layout. So, let's assign the rest of these switches. So, maybe here we'll assign the tremolo. Um, so, we go to effect, and then we pick tremolo right here. 
And then again, we're just using the bypass function. There are other functions in here, again, that we'll cover sometime in the near future. All right, so we have the delay, we have the tremolo. Let's put the chorus up there. So again, I select effect, and then I'm gonna pick the chorus. Now, by default, again, we're selecting the default colors. It's this light blue color. I mean, you can assign any color you wish, if you like. So as you can see, I changed some of these colors, and then now it's gonna be reflected on the unit itself. Um, I just prefer the defaults, but that's just me. You, um, I like to know that the red color is scenes, the blue color are effects, and then you know the green color for presets, and um, the yellow color for layouts, and et cetera. But you, know, you can always change it um, to whatever you want. All right, so now down here, I tend to use overdrives a lot, so I'm gonna put the overdrive right there if I wanna turn that on or off. And then last but not least, the phaser. So we'll put the phaser here. So I hit effect, go down to phaser, and then we're good to go. So now we have this custom layout where we can select any of the first four scenes in this preset, so these four. And then in each of the scenes, you can turn on or off different effects depending on you know, what you need at the time. Um, so this is a really great way to do it. So for example, so we're in this preset. And then now let's say I wanna turn on the delay and the phaser. Okay, so keep in mind, we're still in the first scene, but now we have access to different effects in there. Or, for example, let's say, you know, we're in the fourth scene, which is the lead effects, and we're soloing. And then maybe we want to turn on the phaser in the middle of our solo. Okay, or, um, let's say we're in this cranked scene right here. And as you notice, there's no um, effects on. FM9 is going to reflect that. There we go. And, you know, you can turn on an overdrive. Let's say you, you it's right where, kind of right where you want it. But you just need a little bit extra drive to bring it over the top in a section of a song. You can just add that right there. Now, keep in mind that this is for one preset. Um, if you go to a different preset, let's say we go to this Plexi preset right here, um, you're going to notice that, this. first off, the scene names change because it's reflecting the names of the scenes in this particular preset. So you'll, if you look down at the unit, you'll see that instead of saying, you know, uh, what did it say initially? It would say crunch, cranked, drive, and lead. Um, if we go to this Plexi preset, it now says... Oops, not that one, uh, that one. Now it says high jump 1970, 1959 SLP treble. So again, whatever the scene names that live in the preset will, will populate those um, scene names in your custom layout. Okay, so in this case, now we have you know, four different scenes um, from this custom preset, or I'm sorry, this factory preset. Um, if your custom preset has something like clean, crunch, rhythm, dirty, or whatever, um, that works for you. So here we have this scene. As you can see, the delay is already on in the first. But now you can turn on different effects. And if you saw the previous video about effects, you can see that since there is no tremolo in this preset, the tremolo button on the unit itself isn't, doesn't have a ring on the switch. And that just means that that button is not going to do anything unless a tremolo is actually in this preset. So you can switch between any of the scenes. So now we're, let's go to scene number two, which is the jump. And again, we can turn on different effects. I will turn on the chorus. So these are a bunch of different options. Obviously, every user is going to be different of what effects they need and what scenes they want, as well as the placement of these. So you can put the scenes up here in these three, or you can put you know the effects down here. Really, the sky's the limit. Um, and remember that the effects don't have to be in any particular order, because the order that they're in is on the preset, not on the switches. 
So it doesn't matter what order these are. Now, one last thing, if you're finding that you're like, hey, yeah, I like <clears throat> what I put in here, but maybe you just decide, ah, you know, I want the phaser up here instead. It's just as easy as dragging and dropping to swap the switches in this custom layout. So as you can see, the tremolo and the phaser have now switched places. It reflects that on the unit itself. And again, it's a great way to figure out like what you're gonna be using and when you need it. You can of course swap you know, where the scenes are. Um, so we can maybe move these over. And as you can see, now the scenes are gonna be spread out on those switches. Now, that feels a little cumbersome to me to do it this way, but you know, if you have something very specific, you can do that. A lot of my layouts are a little different than most guitar players because I happen to step with my left foot instead of my right. So I put the most important stuff here on the left side and then the stuff that's here on the right side is less important to me, but your mileage may vary. Um, and the cool thing is it's just as simple as dragging and dropping and moving your switches around as such. Okay, so that's gonna cover it for this custom layout. Now, if you wanna clear this layout, and then maybe start over from scratch, or if there's already something in there, you can of course go to edit and then clear layout. Now, it's gonna give you this message. You wanna just double check. You don't wanna clear out any of the factory layouts unless you um, are confident that you're not gonna need that layout. But um, this is a great way to clear something out and start over. So we'll do that. And the custom layout disappears. And then all the switches are going to go blank, just as you see below. And then when the editor catches up again, you can start over from scratch, okay? So um, we just built our first custom layout. Um, and remember at the very beginning of the video, if you wanna go back to any of the factory layouts, all you have to do is just go to the master layout menu, hitting the far right foot switches simultaneously, and then you have options to go back to the standard factory layouts right here. Okay, so that is gonna do it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, or feel free to leave a comment below. If you need any help, um, by all means, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one, uh, remote sessions to help program any of the Fractal units, including the FM9, the FM3, the AxeFX3, and even some of the legacy units, such as the, uh, the AX8 and the AxeFX2 series, et cetera. So if there's any topics you want me to cover, anything that um, you have a question on, by all means, feel free to reach out to me directly or leave a comment below and I would be happy to do so. Uh, in the meantime, check out some of the other videos on this YouTube channel as well as AxeFX Basics and FM3 Basics. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. I'm falling with you. I'm staying.